The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the sixth chapter. Jesus came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, Where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor, except in their hometown, and among their own kin, and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. This story of Jesus teaching in his hometown of Nazareth is interesting because two of the other Gospels tell it a different way. The Gospel according to Matthew says that Jesus chose not to do deeds of power there because of their unbelief. The Gospel of Luke says that Jesus' teaching made them so mad that they tried to throw him off a cliff. I guess it's hard to do miracles under those conditions. But in the Gospel according to Mark that I had just read, Jesus' power was seemingly limited because of their unbelief. He could do no deed of power there. Those other two Gospel accounts were perhaps uncomfortable with the idea that Jesus's power was dependent on human acceptance. And Jesus is baffled by this. It says he was amazed at their unbelief. Imagine what it takes to amaze Jesus. Their unbelief is so stunning to Jesus that all he can do in response is say something sarcastic. Prophets get all the respect in the world except where they're from, or with their family, or in their own house. What's interesting, though, is the contrast between Jesus and the disciples. Jesus gathers the disciples up and sends them out to the other villages. And while Jesus could do no deed of power in his hometown, the disciples were able to cast out demons and heal the sick in the places that they were sent. And while things are going better for the disciples than they did for Jesus at home, he gives them this warning. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. Jesus is telling them, don't be surprised if people don't want to hear what you have to say. It happened to me. It'll happen to you. Not everyone was open. To Jesus's ministry. But that was nothing new. Jesus identified with the rejected prophets of Israel's past, and not even the distant past. In the very next verse from this chapter in Mark, Jesus is being compared to the ghost of John the baptizer, who was killed by the powers that be for being just a little too critical. God's words come through the mouths of the prophets. 
and they can be a very uncomfortable thing, especially if your actions don't align with what God has designed you to be. That is what the voices of the prophets do. They speak words of critique to the powerful. And words that are critical are quickly silenced by the powerful when they threaten the structures and the systems and the ways that privilege is maintained over others. July 4th is a weird day for churches. Not for every church. Some churches sing the Star Spangled Banner and God Bless America and have fireworks and roll out a giant United States flag. That may or may not seem weird to you. Maybe you wish your church would do more of that sort of thing. There's nothing wrong with being patriotic. What's strange is bringing it into the church. To me, it makes about as much sense as going to the post office to sing hymns and share communion. The church is a spiritual community that is built on Christ, no matter what border it finds itself in. If anything deserves our devotion or allegiance or passion, it is Jesus. As Lutherans, we have a particular way of looking at this, primarily because we have some history of what it looks like when the church can become too closely aligned with nationalism. We've seen what that can produce. Not only that, but the church is part of the kingdom of God, which has no nationality, no borders, no government, except for what sits on Christ's shoulders, ruled by the law of love and the gospel of peace. We are first and foremost citizens of God's community of saints and sinners, bound together by a grace that only one died for. That is our identity above all others. Our freedom is not granted to us because of where we reside. True freedom is in Christ and has no nationality attached to it. So July 4th is a weird day for churches because prophetic, critical words are hard to hear in your own hometown. It's hard to hear that the things that you've become and the things that you stand for are not what God had in mind. They're not holistically good for everyone. The prophetic words of Jesus were rejected in his own hometown. There are prophetic voices speaking in the context of the United States today. Can you hear them? There are some in the United States that say that to offer a word of critique, particularly through looking at the history of racism and white supremacy in our country, is un-American and perhaps even un-Christian. God's word, spoken by the prophets, has always been a word of critique delivered to those in power by the voices on the margins. God, open our ears to hear the words of your prophets speaking today so that your deeds of power can be done here. Amen.